How many of you like surprises? Can I see your hands? You like surprises? So it's kind of interesting. I'd say maybe out of a third of the room, maybe. <laughs> That's interesting. I love surprises, but I don't like a certain type of surprise. I don't really love, love, love surprises that happen in the middle of a service. Those surprises, they're usually a little on the scary side. Uh, but other kind of surprises I like, I just want to encourage you, whether you're online or here in the room, to stay all the way to the end of the service today because we have three different surprises that are coming up at the end of the service. Three Easter surprises, one of which is a gift for you. So I just want to make sure that you hang out, stay with us. You know, to God, the most important thing to God is relationships. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. What's the most important thing to God? Relationships. And I know that because of things we just said. More than anything else, God wants you and me to love Him with our whole being. That's what He wants. That's like the most important thing, the most important commandment ever given, Jesus said, was love your God. Love your God with everything you've got and love the people around you. He wants His love to spill out through you to the people in your life. That's very, very important to God. And he also wants you to love yourself. He wants you to take care of yourself as well. But the bad news is sin entered the world when the first people disobeyed God, Adam and Eve. And from that point on, the humanity in general, we just did what seems right in our own eyes instead of living to please God first. And so when God looks at sin, God requires uh, that, uh, that there be an, amendment, an amends made for sin, that there be compensation. If there's been a sin, God demands that it be paid for. Uh, before Jesus came, God's people sacrificed bulls and goats and sheep and stuff like that uh, to pay for their sin, to compensate for the fact that they sinned. The trouble is there was this unending cycle of sin and sacrifice, sin and sacrifice. Oops, I messed up, I gotta pay for it. Oops, I messed up, I gotta pay for it. And it just, it never ended. And in fact, the priests who were offering the sacrifices had to offer sacrifices for their own sins every day because they were human and frail and messed up too. And so there was just this continual sacrifice and sin cycle. The trouble is those sacrifices did not change people in their heart on the inside of them. It was like an external payment for something that was going on inside, but the inside never changed. Their heart was still the same, still living for themselves rather than God. So Jesus, God's one and only son, came to earth, and he is holy and blameless. I love the phrase in the Bible, he lived, he was, his life was unstained by sin. Isn't that cool? Unstained. Like picture a white shirt that was never touched any dirt. It's unstained by sin. So the one person who did not need to make any sacrifices for his own sin became the sacrifice for everyone else's sin. Isn't that amazing and strange and beautiful that God would do that for us? He made himself a sacrifice for everyone else's sins. Uh, in, in the Bible it says, once for all people and once for all time. So before, it wasn't once for all. It was sacrifices every day in the morning and evening, every day, sacrifices, sacrifices, because the sin just kept going and the sacrifices just kept going. But Jesus came to be that one sacrifice once for all people on the planet, and once for all time. So good, so cool. So when you trust in Jesus' sacrifice, not your own sacrifice of paying for your sin, but you trust in the fact that Jesus paid for your sin, you will be made holy in the eyes of God. He says, I accept that payment, the payment of Jesus' life. I accept that. And so God looks at that sacrifice that you accepted, and he accepts you as holy and blameless. So when God sees you, he sees you like he saw Jesus, unstained by sin. That is good news, people. That is really, really good news. Praise the Lord. So you can literally be changed on the inside. 
that is awesome. And that is very, very good news. I want to read you a scripture in John 3, 16 and 17. For this is how God loved the world. You want to know how he loved the world? This is how. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal. Somebody say eternal. Eternal life. Wow. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world. Jesus didn't come to point out all our sin. He came to pay for it. He came to save the world through him. That's why Jesus came, to save you and me from the effects of our sin. Praise the Lord. That is awesome. So Jesus died on the cross, taking on himself all the sins of the world. Your sin, my sin, and catch this, sin past, present, and future. On the cross that day, he took that all on himself like, uh, like a lamb, like a sacrificed lamb. And he paid the price for all of that sin. Past, present, future, your sin, my sin. Jesus paid for it all on the cross. We praise the Lord for that. He died in your stead. He died instead of you. You don't have to die for your sins. Jesus died for your sins in your place. He was buried in a cave carved out of a rocky hillside, as was the custom of the day. And a huge stone was rolled across in front of the entrance to that tomb to block that entrance. And that was Friday. But Matthew 28 Starting in the first verse, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. So a couple of Jesus' followers, a couple of his apprentices, went out to visit the grave site. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. And I just love that detail. I just picture the angel like crossing his legs, sitting on the stone, <laughs> chilling. Hey, what up? There was an earthquake. And what, what happens next? His face shone like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. So some Roman soldiers were, were commanded to guard this tomb because the religious leaders of the day thought if if that body gets taken away, uh, Jesus' body gets taken away, people will say he rose from the dead. So they, they put uh, a Roman seal on the tomb, they put the heavy stone, and they put a regiment of soldiers to guard it. So the, no, no plain old uh, disciples would have come and taken that body. So the, the, the women get there, there's this huge earthquake, the stone is rolled back, the soldiers faint. I love that. Probably whimpering like little girls. That's, that's kind of the way I picture it. They fell into a dead faint. Ooh. Verse 5. Oh, I do declare. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid. And you know, every time in the Bible, an angel says to someone, don't be afraid, it's because they are petrified. They're terrified. It's so, like, we've seen Hollywood, but we know it's all put on and everything. But these people, like, oh, my goodness, an angel earthquake stone roll, bright shining, Ooh, wow, they're like, they're afraid, they're afraid, so the angel says, don't be afraid, I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified, just on Friday, and he, uh, he is risen, he isn't here, he is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen, come and see that where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Wow. Oh, my goodness. And so as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. That is the story of Easter. If you are wondering, what's the real meaning or what's the first Easter? That's it. That's the Easter story right there. Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He is alive. That's the story of Easter. 
Wow. But I feel like his, his rising means more when you know why he died, that he laid down his life as a sacrifice for you and me. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. And especially when you realize he was the one person without sin, that he would die for someone else's sin. He took the wrath. He took the blame for others' sin. That is amazing, and that's awesome. Praise the Lord that he would do that. So if you put your faith in him, and what is faith? If you believe him, trust him, commit to obey him, that's faith. If you put your faith in Jesus and his sacrifice, you will have eternal life that starts right now. A lot of times we kind of th- we have this picture in mind that, oh, eternal life starts when we die. But no, eternal life starts now. And when your body dies, you just keep on living in the presence of Jesus. Eternal life starts now and continues on eternally. Jesus did the impossible when he rose from the dead. He wasn't just resuscitated for a moment. He rose forevermore. Hallelujah. And if I could summarize this message in this, it would be in this phrase, Jesus' resurrection declares your impossible possible. Jesus' resurrection declares your impossible possible. You know that impossible thing in your life? That would never happen, you think. That's impossible for this thing to be, uh, to be corrected or for this thing to be healed or for this thing to be provided for. That's impossible. Jesus' resurrection declares that thing, your impossible. He declares it possible. He stamps it possible. Why? Because he conquered death. That's the biggest thing. If he could do that, he could provide for you. He can declare your impossible thing possible. Possible. But it's been 12 years. Possible. He declares it on Easter, and that's what's so beautiful. Three particular impossible things that Jesus loves to do. And I don't know for sure, but I kind of think these might be his three favorite miracles. I don't know. We'll see. First one is salvation. Salvation. He saves your soul from the effects of death. The effects of death, uh, of sin rather, are death. And so he saves your soul from that. He redeems you. He buys you back so you don't have to die. And nothing you could do could save yourself from sin. No amount of good deeds, no amount of giving, serving, donating, piety, nothing you could do or I could do could save us from our sin. No good deeds. So Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice. So he loves to do the miracle, the impossible thing of salvation. It's impossible for you and I to save ourselves. Jesus declares it possible. He will save you. His second Uh, Another favorite miracle of Jesus is healing, healing for your body and soul, healing for everything uh, about you that needs healing. Doctors and therapists do help, and I have seen both, but eventually this body wears out. I mean, eventually we wear out, and Jesus often heals you in the here and now, and that's why we pray for healing often because we've seen him do it. And often he heals you right away. Often he heals you after praying for a while. But I want you to know that he is preparing a place of ultimate healing for you. We're grateful for temporary healings here on earth. We're grateful for healings, for miracles. We're grateful for that. But what he's getting ready for you is a place in heaven where you are always healed. There is no crying. There is no dying. There is no sorrow there because it is a beautiful, perfect place that he's preparing for us. A third favorite miracle of Jesus is freedom. 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 Freedom from fear. Freedom from bondage. Freedom from torment. Freedom from depression. Freedom from addiction. Freedom. Jesus loves to bring freedom. And he came to replace those things with confidence in him. Freedom from destructive habits and grace. That's what he comes to give you instead. And I, I, I just want to echo uh, what was said earlier. I, I really want you to come to the deliverance conference. 
you get yourself there. Set it aside. Get it off work now if you've got to. Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and Sunday morning. Because Jesus is going to be setting you free. I, I, I want to be freed from some stuff. I, seriously, I feel like there's always something to be freed from and to be freed to in Jesus' name. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. So we're going to look at five things uh, that Jesus said will contribute to making your impossible possible. So kind of setting up the climate, if you will, for receiving a miracle. So in, I'm just going to go through several scriptures uh, rapidly, and you're, you're going to love this. All five things start with the same letter. Oh, Nailed it. Wow. The first one is faith. Faith. In Mark chapter 11, 22 to 24, Jesus' words are written down, and he said, have faith in God. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. So one of the, one of the, the factors, one, just one of the things you can do uh, to just get yourself in that position of receiving a miracle is faith. Believe that you've received it and kick doubt out. Believe that you received it. That's what, that's what Jesus said. Believe that you've received it. So when we pray, we say, Lord, would you please heal? Would you please provide for this thing? Would you please do this thing? And I believe that I have received it. It's mine. It's coming. I'm looking for it. It's been ordered on Amazon of heaven. And it's just on its way. I may not have seen it quite yet, but I have received it. I have ordered it. I know it's coming. And the reason is because we have a receipt. And Jesus is that receipt. What he did on Easter is your receipt. And I just want to encourage you. I, I know how things are. Sometimes God just heals. Bam. Healed. Other times we pray for months or years and, and then he provides. And other times we pray and pray and oh, we don't see it in this life. And to us it seems like forever. But compare 50 years with the literal forever. And Jesus is preparing for you if you don't get to see it in this life. He is preparing for you a place of healing and provision. So either way, you win. Either way. And we're believing for now, and we're trusting in God's timing. Amen? So you, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So bring your faith to God and believe that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. That's what it says in God's word. A second word that just contributes to the climate of receiving a, a, a miracle, forgiveness forgiving, forgiving. So Mark eleven twenty five, 25, right after the passage I just read, Jesus said, but when you're praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. And I just picture this. If we, uh, if we could just be, I'm jealous of the disciples, the people in Jesus, uh, when Jesus walked on the earth that were around him. But if you could just be stand, stand face to face with Jesus and say, Jesus, I'd like to bring you my request. I need this healing. Jesus himself says, well, let's, let's talk about something else first. Who do you need to forgive? Isn't that interesting? So in the kingdom of God, forgiveness takes priority over moving mountains. Forgiving others takes priority over moving mountains. And I'm so thankful that Jesus just told us, well, there's, there's a little roadblock that might be why we're, we haven't received something. Uh, it, it's not, not, to, it, not necessarily this, but this is, oh, we're just going through five possible things. All right? Um, forgiving heals your heart, and it releases the other person. And God really likes freedom. Forgiving is letting go of your desire for that person to get what's coming to them. It's letting go of the need to punish. And it can happen a lot of different ways. Sometimes we're like, oh, I just hope that they experience the pain I got, I had. Or it might be like, I'm just going to withhold my presence from them. I'm, so I, I'm going to punish them by not being their friend anymore. It can take a lot of different forms. Forgive, you know you're forgiven when you let go of that. And you start to pray blessing on that person. And then now you're in a climate 
for miracles. Okay, here's another thing. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's this. Uh, fame. Fame for the Father. Father God. In John 14, 12 to 14, Jesus' words are, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to go be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that, somebody say, so that, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Jesus is concerned about the fame of the Father more than your fortune. And sometimes that's just kind of an obstacle for receiving your, your miracle. It can be an obstacle if, if you're praying just so that you're, uh, it's just about you. But instead, if you, I've prayed many prayers where I just go, Father, would you do this so that everyone will see how awesome you are? Like that, that is a great climate to receive a miracle. Another one is follow through. Follow through. Really, I probably should have said obedience, but it didn't start with F. So follow through. The next verse, after what I just read, John 14, 15, if you love me, obey my commandments. That's what Jesus said. So he did not say, if you obey me, then I will love you. He did not say that. Everybody shake your head. No, he did not say that. He said, hey, if, you've, if you put your faith in me, if you love me, then obey. Obey my commandments. Like, let work that out in your life. But it doesn't affect his love for you. But he's just saying, if you love me, then obey. Obey my word. Obey my commands. And uh, actions speak louder than words, right? I grew up hearing that. That was an expression that my mom and grandma said many times. Actions speak louder than words. When you're apprenticing under Jesus, you're learning his heart, and you're more likely to ask for things that he already believes are best for you. In other words, when you're following Jesus, when you're obeying him, what you want changes. What you pray for changes. And when you're praying in line with God's word, you're putting yourself in a position for a miracle. You're getting yourself in that climate. And the last one is friendship. Matthew 18, 19 to 20 says this. Jesus was talking. He said, I also tell you this. If two of you agree, there is power in agreement. If two of you agree here on earth, concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Now, we are gathering right now in this room and online. And Jesus just said, he is here. He's here. So Jesus said, get with a friend who's also a follower of Jesus, and two of you pray together. Wow. He said, that's very powerful. That's setting up the climate. For, uh, for God to move. There's power in agreement. And that's one of the things I love about our connect groups. Every time we have a connect group, we pray. Every time. Like we may sacrifice chit-chat time or, or this or that sometimes if we're, if we're getting a late start. But every time we pray for each other. And uh, that is, that's so cool to do because we're, we're getting ourselves in a climate, in an atmosphere for, to receive our miracles. Now, I brought all that with a little fear and trepidation, so I'm just going to, I, I, I hope you hear this next spot, this next thing. These, in these verses, and they're all the words of Jesus, that's why I chose them. This is not a formula for you to twist God's arm or demand that he answer your prayer in your way or your timing. He was not giving us a formula at all. We cannot require to the almighty God you know, require God to do anything. He is God. We are not. He knows better. We do not. But what Jesus was doing is he was showing you and me how to get ourselves in a position to move mountains. Because he said, I want you to move mountains. And from his own words, we know how to get ourselves more ready to move mountains. Because I, I want to see mountains move in your life. That's why we're bringing this message today. And I want to see mountains move in your life because Jesus does. That's where I got it. I didn't think this up. Jesus wants mountains to move in your life. And that's so good. And so he, he, those five things get your heart in the right place. He responds to your faith. He responds when you forgive others. 
He responds to you wanting to make God famous, not yourself. He responds to your follow-through, your obedience, getting your heart in the right place. And he responds to friends praying together. He responds to that. So I want to ask you, let's get this real. Is there a situation in your life that seems impossible? What seems impossible? What, what have you been praying for for it seems like forever and it's not happened? Or what's just come up that is urgent and you have not seen, like, I, I don't know how, I don't know how this could be fixed. Uh, uh, this, this seems impossible for me. Maybe you have an eating disorder. I want you to know I have a friend who was delivered of an, easy, uh, a, 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 an eating disorder. I have seen Jesus set people free of that. Maybe you're going through a dark time or a depression. I have a friend that Jesus set free from that. I know that Jesus sets free. Maybe you desperately need a job. I have a friend who needed a better job. And God gave her that job. She was set free. Praise the Lord. Uh, and uh, with her background, there was really, there was no reason. It's like she didn't bring a ton of experience or a degree in that field. She needed to get to this other field, and God just said, okay, then I'll open that door. He opened the impossible. Maybe your marriage is not doing well. Well, I know several couples whose marriages were not doing well at all. Near the brink, if you know what I mean. And I've seen God heal them. Them. I, 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 I can name you names. I want to show you a video of one of my friends in our church so we can see what God did in the impossible in his life. Hi, my name is Jordan Wilson, and today I'm 94 Days Clean. For the last 12 years, I've been strongly addicted to drugs. Being addicted to drugs takes all the fun out of life. You have zero control. Um, you have no purpose, most importantly, and uh, puts you in a financial hole. Um, I would spend all my money on sporting a habit, and that resulted in just not having enough money for bills and an upset family, and the wife was not happy. I reached out to NFC uh, they got my kids presents for Christmas, so I found out what church did that and found out it was NFC and I texted them and asked for prayer and that's right when I was getting sober and that following Sunday I attended my first service with NFC and have been going ever since. I made a change and I found a new home uh, here at NFC. I asked Jesus to Forgive me of the sins that I have committed and help me to move forward and make better decisions and to uh, resist the devil and to stand firm and turn down temptation and to uh, lean on his promises and the things that he has in store for me. Life is different now in so many different ways. Um, I have full control over my finances, I have a really, really good job now. My family's happy. Um, I'm able to be trusted again by family members and actually have people that look up to me now. And that's a really good feeling. I believe God can move mountains for people. I believe there is um, nothing that he won't do for you in your life when you submit you ask him with a clean heart God I need your help and I can't do this out without you Lord and uh, he will show up for you amen amen hallelujah so Jordan is experiencing for the first time in years freedom God has really done the impossible for him uh, I know that he has tried at different times but something is different this time, and God is doing the impossible. Right now, he is doing the impossible in him. The family might have said, that's impossible. Jordan might have even thought, that's impossible to be free. And yet, Jesus' resurrection declares that that impossible is possible. 
So what seemingly uh, impossible thing will you be believing for today? A relationship to be healed? A physical or emotional healing in your life? Freedom for yourself or someone close to you? Or uh, for a family member to put their faith in Jesus? Or a job? The, The list could be endless. Let's believe for it. Let's believe for it. can't be moved They say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way the tide will never change they haven't seen what you can do for there is power in your name so much power in your name move the immovable break the unbreakable God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. We know that hope is never lost. For there is still an empty grave. God, we believe no matter what. For there is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. you 
what did Jesus say? He said, if you believe in your heart, you believe that you received and don't doubt, you can say this mountain, be moved. Would you stand to your feet? If you're in the room and online, let's get ready to pray. And what I'd like us to do today, this morning, we've been talking about the fact that Jesus declares that the impossible, his resurrection declares that the impossible is now possible. He's shown us that. So what, what thing in your life, what impossible thing do you want to bring to the Lord? Well, I want us to just take a, a few moments on this Easter Sunday to cry out before God and just bring the impossible thing. Maybe, the, maybe you're always praying about certain things, but, but what's that one thing that, that you always come back to? Lord, if you would please do this in my life, this impossible thing. Let's come back to it. Let's attack it today in prayer. And let's bring it to the Lord. Uh, here we are, a bunch of friends together, agreeing. Let's do it. Let's agree that God is going to do the impossible. So I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to just pray for you. Let's all pray together. Would and, and then I'll, I'll lead us all in prayer in just a moment. But would you cry out to God? Bring specifically what is that, what is something impossible in your life that you need God to do for you. Let's go to prayer right now. Let's pray out loud. Would you just lift your voices to God? Lord Jesus, we bring you all of our impossible things, Lord God. We, we just heard, Lord, the, the beautiful line, from the impossible, we will see miracles. And so I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, for each impossible thing that we've been lifting up in this place, uh, for people to be healed, for relationships to be mended, for depressions and other addictions or habits to fall off, for, for our family members to, to put their faith in Jesus, Lord, for all these things that we're praying about, Lord, for healing that seems like we've tried everything we know. We've tried every doctor, every medicine, every alternative. We, we've prayed, we've done everything, Lord. It seems impossible, but we bring it to you. Right now, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would do the impossible, that you would move the immovable out of our lives, Lord God, that you would break the hold, to break the unbreakable chains in our lives in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, I just declare right now that, that from this moment, people are walking free for the first time in their lives. For the first time in years, they are walking free right now. I declare it. Right now, I declare that bodies are healed. In Jesus' name, some for the first time in years are being healed. We declare healing. We declare freedom. We declare salvation over people's lives, Lord God, right now, for our family members, for ourselves. Lord, in Jesus' name, we declare your good things, all those things you said we could do. And we say to that mountain, be moved. Get out, mountain. Get out of our way and be cast into the sea. We praise you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, right now, we believe that we've received. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be great to look back to this Easter and say, that was the day my impossible became possible with God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, at the end of the service, our ushers have a gift for you, so I want to make sure that you you stay stay stay, near, stay nearby. All right, so they're gonna uh, be at uh, the doors uh, after service. This door to kids church and that door. They'll be at the doors, ready to hand out a gift for you. So stay tuned. Now, if you're here in the room, would you be seated for just a moment and take that Connect card? So every regular NFC and, and tender, even Pastor Christian, would you take that Connect card? Hopefully you've filled out the front already. If not, really quick, put in some basic info, and then I want to do a survey with you. All right? So in order, the survey is, is going to mean more if I, if I have at least a little basic contact info for you so I know who I'm praying for. All right? So I, I want to know where you are right now in your faith. 
all right? So hopefully get, get that quick, quick contact info on the front. And on the back is a survey. There are four little enigmatic boxes, A, B, C, and D. I want to know, I just want to ask you a little survey. Where are you right now in your faith, your faith in Jesus? Are you A, already a follower or an apprentice of Jesus? If so, mark that box. If B, today, you want to begin a relationship with Jesus. You want to ask him to forgive your sins. I'm going to lead you through a prayer for that in a moment. But if today you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, know his forgiveness, know his freedom, know his healing, mark B, I'm beginning. C, I'm considering. I'm considering putting my faith in Jesus, but I'm not quite ready yet today. I have maybe some questions I, I want answered or something like that, but I'm, cons I'm, I'm open to it, but not ready. Would you mark C on the back of your Connect card? And the last one is D. I hope you don't uh, uh, mark this, but if you do, I appreciate the honesty. D is I don't ever intend to follow Jesus. Don't want to do it. Don't ever intend to. Not my thing. Mark that, though, if that's where you are honestly, and I just want you to know I'm going to be praying for you. That, that's all. I'm just going to be praying that God breaks through into your life and that he blesses you in the year to come. So how do you put your faith in Jesus? How do you begin as a Christian? How do you begin uh, following Jesus? How do you become his apprentice? Well, just this simple. Turn away from your sin. Sin is everything that, that you and I do that harms yourself or others. That's sin. Sin is that which separates us from God. It's, it's being controlled by something other than God. Those things, that's sin. So turn away from that, turn your life over to God, and let Him lead. That's how we do it together. And I'd love to just pray with you. Would you stand to your feet one more time? And for all the bees today, I want to lead you in prayer. For all those who are beginning a relationship today, whether you're online or in the room, would you just bow your heads with me? And repeat after me. We're going to pray a prayer, but don't pray it to me. I'm just going to coach you. Pray it to Jesus. Okay, let's pray. Let's, and let's, church, let's join. Let's just all be in unity and pray out loud together. But if you're beginning, pray this to God today. Here we go. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's just give some applause to those who have made that decision today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So in person, would you really quickly fill out the rest of that, uh, that uh, card, even if you're a regular attendee, and uh, mark A, B, or C, or D. I want to know if you just began a relationship with Jesus, and I just want to encourage you uh, about that. Online, if you just prayed that prayer, and you put your faith in Jesus today, you became a Christian today, I'd love to just get some next steps in your hand, just something, uh, something electronic that will just help you know, hey, do this next, so you can move forward in your faith. To get that, to receive that, text the word restart to the phone number, 97,000. Text the word restart, no hyphens, no dashes, restart to 97,000. And that will just let me know and I'll encourage you in your faith. You guys, I'm so glad you've been here today. This is an awesome day. I, I hope that you feel encouraged to believe for that impossible thing again. And we're going to believe that God is going to make it possible, uh, just like he did for Jordan. Well, what a great testimony. And he's going to do that in your life as well. Wow, so glad you're here. Leave your Connect cards on the, on the seats. Ushers will pick them up. That way we don't have to all have to touch each other's Connect cards. Leave them on the seats. Ushers at the main door and ushers also here handing out our, our gift for people as they go. God bless you. Happy Easter. Thanks for being here. And uh, Pastor Christian is coming really fast. Come on, come on up. Come on up. I got a little ahead of you. He's got, he's got the, the last info we need. There you go. Okay, come on. <laughs> Don't you want God to move mountains in your life? Yeah. I, I know like I do. I really, I really do. Like, we all have mountains in our lives we need God to move, and we need to believe for it. So 
wants to do that this week. We believe in God for that. If you're watching us online, would you just subscribe to our channel? It helps other people find us. And if you came here today and um, you have kids, maybe you came to this first service, you can still come to the Kids Carnival after the 11 o'clock service. So come around noon. We'll find a place for you. Um, it's going to be a great time. There's going to be popcorn, tons of games. It's going to be so great. Um, yeah, and we'll see you next week. Next week at 10.30. So this is kind of a, a special Sunday where we have two services. Our normal service time is 10.30 a.m. God bless you. We love you. Happy Easter.